Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're just getting set up here. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Ryan Erke. I am the Sustainably um, Facilitator here at St. Scholastica. Today is part of our conversations. We're going to do an internship conversation with Claire Anderson, who's graduating at the end of this month. She is currently wrapping up an internship with Hawk Ridge Bird Observatory. We have internships are sponsored by the Margaret A. Cargill, our MACP um, foundation. And so this is a paid internship that supports um, students from CSS to go do internships at different sustainably related activity um, sites. If you are interested in um, an internship in the future, uh, feel free to reach out to myself or to Carrie Taylor Kemp. I'm I'm doing a couple different things here. So these are some different internship sites we've had in the past. Duluth Community Garden, we actually have a student, Anna Tosh, who's there right now, um, interning. Um, Hartley, Salt Lake Sea Urban Farm, we've done a lot of different internships and we encourage you to check them out as well. And if you're interested in finding out how you can be funded to do an internship for yourself in the spring, um, we're kind of late, but we'll be looking at stuff for the summer and the fall. Please reach out to myself or Carrie Taylor Kemp. Um, so today I'm going to hand this over here pretty quickly to Claire Anderson. Again, I said Claire is a senior graduating this December, and she's going to be talking about her uh, internship with, um, with Hawk Ridge. So I'm going to stop the share and Claire, I'll hand it off to you. Sweet. Okay. Let me share my screen. All right. Okay, cool. And then present. Uh, sweet. Okay. So like Ryan said, my name's Claire and uh, this semester I... Hi. Wait, what? Go for it. Oh, okay. Um, and then, uh, so this semester I had my internship at Hawks Ridge. Wait, I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, sweet. So just a little bit about Hawks Ridge. Um, I should have put the address down, but I was silly and didn't. But I will do that after the chat so you guys will know where to access it. And if you just Google Maps Hawks Ridge, Hawks Ridge Bird Observatory, you can find it too. So just a little bit of history of the ridge. So before like the 1950s, uh, like people were aware that like a lot of birds flew um, through the Duluth area. So let me see my cursor. So like we're here, so like birds will just kind of fly along this ridge and then down into like the Southern of the state. Um, but since they, so they knew that this was like bird path, but instead of using it for like conservation efforts, uh, hunters would use it for target practice. So they would just stand on the ridge and literally shoot birds down, um, which is very hard to imagine now. But um, so, and then back then there was something called the Duluth Bird Club, but now they're known as the Duluth Audubon Society. And they kind of stepped in and was like, what are you doing? Um, and so through a lot of like protesting and a lot of signs and legislative work, they made uh, shooting up there illegal. And then, so right after that, they installed like the first Hawk Watch in 1951. And then um, in 1972, with um, like some donations, they purchased the top of that ridge line from the city of Duluth. And then from then on, they um, started to manage the 365 acres. And this land is open to the public for both like viewing, like outdoor recreation and like science. Um, and so also in 1972, they started the first, sorry. Okay, they started the first uh, counts. And also that's uh, the year that the banding station opened. And so Hawks Ridge is a really special like little gem of Duluth. And it's a major, major site for um, bird migration. Uh, so like songbirds and like raptors and geese and tons of other things. Um, and since like it's been going for almost 40 years, it's the longest like continuous count going in North America with counts in the spring migration north and then the fall migration south. And then um, because it's such a busy traffic zone, 
we also get like huge, huge count numbers of many different species of birds. Okay, so going into this internship, I had some goals um, and these are subject to change because after you do it, your goals kind of change. Um, but so one of my goals was to really work uh, with education and I wanted to engage with visitors about hawk information. And then I was gonna do that in person at the Ridge and then since we're in COVID times, uh, if things were to change, I would do it virtually through social media. And then I also really wanted to work hands on with the birds, um, like doing things like identification and like aging, as well as some banding. And then um, it gets cold pretty quick and I didn't wanna be, and so then the birds kind of stop migrating around like early November. And then so to fill up the rest of the time of the semester, I was going to enter data um, to help like in the research of the bird migration. And like I said before, like some things changed, but for the most part, I kind of followed this track. So education. So Macy or Macy, basically one of like my most or like my major positions was as the education intern. And so like some of the roles that I did in this um, in this position was that every morning I would help set up. So like, here's the lookout station. Um, and like, we would set up these tables with the cones just like for COVID precautions. And then we would also like update the board hourly with um, the bird counts and also like the temperature. So here's the board that we would update. And then I was also in charge of transporting and handling um, some of the birds for class demonstrations. And I, this is why I love biology so much, but um, so there's a different type of can for every bird. So sharp chin hawks go in Pringles can, um, especially bacon cheeseburger Pringles cans. Um, yeah, so I would carry those up from the banding station and then we would do like demonstrations where we do like hold the bird and then like do the wings. And then we would show like legs and stuff. So here's me with a sharp chin hawk. Um, this is the first bird I ever held. So it's kind of special. And then um, there were also some field trips going on, but since of COVID, um, a lot of field trips were canceled, but there was one with an elementary group and it was pretty awesome. We took them down on a hike um, and there's another like outridge down a trail. And so we showed them some birds there. And then also, um, so in my goal slide, I mentioned how I kind of wanted to be a part of social media, but that didn't really end up happening, which I'm perfectly happy with. So the, the amazing thing about birders is that like everyone is a master wildlife photographer. <laughs> um, so they are just amazing pictures and like they know so much. So like social media, I feel like was very well covered by them. All right. And then also, since I wanted to get some hands-on opportunity, I also spent some time at the banding station. So um, like during like, like, early, like September, um, I worked closely with Margie and she bands mostly passerines. And with her, I kind of just followed her around and saw like the types of like nets they had, which are pretty much like to describe them, they kind of look like like tennis nets that are just like super long and they're like saggy in like certain parts. So they create little pockets for like the birds to fall into. And then you like gently untangle them and you put them in a nice little pouch. And then um, we would like identify them, age them and sex them and etc. And then, so here's a little sparrow. Uh, and I didn't have any photos. So I just stole this from their Facebook site. Um, and then there was also the raptor banding like station. Uh, and I didn't really do much like hands on stuff with there because it's, yeah, I was mostly doing education stuff at that time. And so I would mostly go there and like pick birds up from demos. And then I would also work on releasing them. So here is, and I also got to like hold some of them. So that's really cool. So here's a photo of me holding a rough legged hawk. Um, and then I had a video of me releasing some, but I got a new phone, so I lost that, but oh well. Oh. And then um, in the evenings, there is also owl banding. And 
Oh, I love owls so much. They are so cute. So here's me with a little Sawit owl. So this is their like adult size. They are like that tiny. And then here is um, one of the banders, Danny, holding a barred owl. And then the really cool thing about, um, and then you also catch the owls the same way you would as like the passerins or songbirds. And then, so the really cool thing about hanging out in the banding or in the owl banding station was that a lot of grad students would hang out there like at night. So it'd probably be like 10 at night or something. And um, and then I really got to learn about like the research and they would take like feather and blood samples. And it was just really cool to see what they were up to. And then, um, so like with the season kind of closing down and it, it was getting really cold, I still needed to complete some of my hours. So then I transitioned to some online work and then it was less like data entry sort of stuff and it was more like educational work. So there was a lot of like things lost. So they needed to do um, some like some updates, like like redos and like recovery of information. And so right now I'm working on this, but I am creating my like migration timeline information charts and I'm doing that like through Excel and I'm relearning how to use Excel. And um, so let's see. So I'm trying to recreate like this bar chart, but for the spring, I wish I had a better photo of it. But these are just some of the binders and laminated sheets I had. And then I'm also gonna work on updating and digitalizing the field guides, but just depending on like how much time I have left in the semester, it really depends how much more I get done. So Claire, I have, a, I have a question about that. Like, are those um, like, so that's just data from the banding that's taking place and the tracking that's taking place over, or is it, or is it more just raw numbers for like the amount of bird seen and stuff? Um, I, it's a little bit of both. So I should have mentioned this earlier on, but there's also like um, the count platform. So there's people there like every single day for probably like eight or 10 hours, just like counting the number of birds that go through. So that's where a lot of these numbers are come from. So like less so banding numbers and more so just like counts of the number of birds that come through, cool. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then, so in conclusion, so some challenges were definitely COVID. Um, like because of COVID, there weren't a lot of like, like groups going through like for like, um, like tours or for like field trips or even like college groups. So like, it wasn't a lot of like hands on stuff with students that I would have preferred. And then also one of the challenges I had was like my lack of personal knowledge. Like I didn't really know a lot about birds going in. So actually like a lot of the visitors like educated me, which I thought was really cool. And so I feel like if I maybe had known a little bit more about birds going into it, I might have been a little bit more helpful, but oh well. And then some things I would do differently is definitely timing. Um, in, so I started this in September and then I kind of went through the end of October, early November and just trying to fit it in with my schedule. I really wish I did that before because in September when it was warm and nice and when I should have been doing more of my hours, I didn't because I was still figuring out my schedule. And then I did the majority of my work like in October, November, and it was really cold. So that's why all of my photos are me like super mega bundled up, but that's okay. And then um, some of my takeaways, like this internship definitely reminded me why I love biology so much. Like birders are just awesome people. Like they'll be like a sharp shin hawk and they're like pretty common on the ridge. And it'll be like, the 200th one of the day or something but everyone will look at the bird like it's the first time they've ever seen one and I just like love that curiosity so much and then also the people I got to work with were super awesome so this is a photo from Facebook but on Halloween a couple of the counters dressed up as their favorite birds and I didn't I didn't include their faces for like privacy reasons but um like they even made like little bird bands and it was just super cool to see people geek out and that sort of thing so yeah cool thanks Claire for sharing yeah I'll stop my I thought maybe those are your legs the, the, no like, <laughs> I, I was lame I didn't even think to dress up 
Cool. So what I am, we've got some time here to answer any questions that anyone has about internships or Hawk Ridge. Um, and Claire or myself would be happy to try to answer them. Um, and you can put them in the chat. You can just kind of pop your camera on too. Or if you don't have a camera, you still want to ask them, do it in person, you're welcome to do so. I'll do my best to watch if people are um, raising their hands. Um, I have a question for you, Claire. Mm -hmm. So you talked about goals. So this is more about just like setting up your internship and stuff. Um, you said goals change and like things kind of flexible. How did you kind of, can you talk a little bit more about like how you, I, I know that there's some students that we worked with a lot who like, okay, you need to set some goals up. Can you talk about that process about what you set up your goals with and maybe what you would recommend people to think about or talk about with their potential site um, as they're doing that, if they're setting up an internship for themselves? Yeah, so I think like definitely like, because when you go into an inter internship, there's like definitely things like you personally want out of it, but you also have to think about like the people that are like holding the internship for you, like they also have like certain goals in mind. And so I think like having an open dialogue early on about like what both people want is super helpful. And then for me, like I had done other wildlife like stuff before. So I kind of knew the things that interested me more than others. So like I definitely wanted to do education stuff and like hands on stuff. And so I kind of knew that going into it, that's what I wanted. But, but it's different talk? for everyone. But, yeah, I was. I also was curious about that. Like, what other experiences did you have, either internships or similar type of, like, outside of the classroom, hands-on experience work? Did you have before this? And do you? I'm curious. Like, was that? That sounds like that was helpful. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I guess not this summer, but like I guess last summer, um, I worked with Pam Freeman on her chipmunk research. So if any of you guys are interested about that, you should totally ask Pam Freeman about it. She's awesome. Jim Monks are awesome. Um, but what was I going to say? But yeah, and honestly, just like getting outside and hiking and like, like even like carrying like a field guide with you or something to like know about trees is super helpful. Like I'm taking an ecology class right now. So that also really helped with just like general knowledge of biology stuff but yeah cool um, hey claire it's carrie i have a question mm -hmm. how are you i'm good good it's, fine. See. it's the week before finals <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for your presentation i wanted to talk to you or ask a question about um, goals outside of biology. So when you think about kind of the things you learned from this experience that could be applicable to any student that aren't specific to science, can you think of about some of those and maybe what you gleaned from this experience? Yeah, so I don't know about other people, but I'm definitely really awkward when I meet people at first. And like a lot of the people at the Ridge we're also like older, retired people. And so like, I definitely had to like learn how to not be weird and awkward around these people. And so I thought that was a really valuable skill, like just learning how to be comfortable. And then also since I didn't really know a lot of the information and how like the visitors like definitely knew a lot more than me. Like I definitely also learned how to just be like, yeah, I don't really know, but here's this person to ask to. Like, I definitely think like admitting like, like gaps in your knowledge and just being human and transparent about things like people receive that really well so I think that was like a good thing to learn too thank you that's great so Claire there's a question in the chat asking about what your major is are you a biology major or education major and then the follow-up to that same person asked are you more interested in ornithology now um Let's see. So I am a biology major um, and like more towards like, I think the ecology aspect, like big systematic organismal things instead of more micro biology stuff. Um, I'm not an education major, but I, I just like educating people because I really care about the environment. And I think like for people to care, like education is a huge step in that. 
And then um, I am definitely way interested in ornithology now. Like for some reason, like I just came into being like, oh, birds, but actually birds like, like, bio like biologically, like they're like systems they have um, are really cool and really interesting. And also like their behavior is really cool. But um, I don't know. I'm definitely into ornithology now, but also like, I don't know. I feel like biology is so wide. And I have so many interests. It's just like another thing to the interest list. So, but, but yeah, it's cool. Cool. Um, one of the things I, I think you touched on it just a little bit, but I'm curious if you'd talk a little bit more about him. I mean, maybe it was just a passing thing, but I'm curious if there's any comments or discussion at Hawk Ridge um, that you in experienced or maybe uh, you've read and talked about with other people in different places or studied about different environmental challenges that um, birds are facing right now, like, I don't know, biodiversity loss, habitat loss, uh, the effects of climate change. Do you, can you talk a little bit about stuff you know about that or you experienced and talked about at Hawk Ridge? Yeah, so I mean, this was my first season there, so I don't really have like personal experience, but just looking at like some of the data charts and stuff, like you can definitely see how like, the window frames for like certain like bird species has like shifted more. And so like their seasons for migration are a lot shorter. And then also there's a lot of like fluctuations in population size um, that come through, but that could be due to a lot of factors more. Um, so birds typically, um, they migrate um, for like food and resources. And like sometimes it's like weather conditions and climate, but it's mostly for food. So they're kind of just following the prey. And so I think like if that prey changes, then their like migration patterns also change quite a bit, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know too much about like weather and patterns, but they also um, really like the way they travel such long distances is that they um, they pretty much on like warm sunny days, there's like thermal. So they find a thermal and then like it's like an elevator, they just like circle up and then they like shoot off of it like a slingshot and like for every mile, uh, they go up on the thermal they can go like seven miles like without like flapping so that's like super impressive but um I'm guessing like climate change probably is switching up those patterns so that probably also affects like the length of their migrations too mm -hmm. but that's just what I my brain is thinking cool on um a different but similar I guess I'm thinking about sustainably broadly and thinking about the environmental impacts or connection to this birding. Um, this past year, and I know you and I touched on it briefly, but we haven't talked about it since um, then. There was a very public case of um, a woman who called the cops on someone in New York about birding and the person that called the cops was white um, and the person that was not was black, it was videotaped. I don't know the details of the names and stuff. I'm kind of curious if you have any thoughts about um, social justice related to birding. Did that come up in the conversations with anyone at the Ridge or do you, you have thoughts about it yourself, what you see in relation to um, people who are engaged with birding and not or not engaged with birding? Yeah, so I mean like we talked about it a little bit but more on like a gender equality side of social mm -hmm. justice. So like the really cool thing about Hawks Ridge is that like a majority of like the banders encounters are all like females that are like 20 like in their like low, younger than 30 so they're all like 25 like 24 so like that was super cool just to see like young women really involved in like typically I think like in the past it's usually like older like white men that have kind of been in this field mm -hmm. um but then I also think that like birding um, requires a lot of like time and commitment and like to be able to like afford like binoculars and scopes and that sort of thing like it's like very expensive so I think that's probably like quite a bit of a limiting factor like I didn't have binoculars I borrowed them from Hawks Ridge which was super awesome um that's why I also think that like uh, like school field trips and education are just so important because it like makes it a lot more accessible and I also love that Hawks Ridge is free and open to the public like at all times so it's super accessible place but yeah I don't know I do but yeah 
that's just my opinion on it. No, that's great. Thank you. There have been a few resources shared online in the chat. One is the, um, the I guess, real live data. Uh, Eric can probably clarify that, but I pulled it up on um, Hawk Ridge, um, kind of what, how many birds are counted daily. And then I also put up a list uh, Saints Glasgow on their Duluth campus is keeping a catalog of birds too. And this has been going for um, decades. And so it's housed at our website um, for our library as well. So there's a couple resources if you're interested in birding. Um, as we're wrapping things up, Claire, I have um, one more question, but I just want to share, you know, if anyone else has any other questions, they can reach out to you directly. Claire, I don't know if you want to share your email or a different way yeah. people can contact you. That could be something I know some people have already reached out to Claire about Hawk Ridge. It's an amazing resource in our community. Um, and so that's something that's very accessible as an internship site. Um, and I hope as COVID precautions are no longer necessary later on, that things will be a, you know, a more unique experience. There's Claire's email. Um, I guess, so I'm thinking about if I wanted to go up to Hawks Ridge, like sometime soon, like what should I do or how should I best experience it? Like, a, or I know it's different now than in the fall to maybe like the next fall. Is there certain places that were like your favorite experiences at Hawk Ridge that like, oh, we should go check it out too? Yeah, so definitely, I think like, there is a spring migration, but like, I think it's more of like a trickle and less like masses of birds. Um, but I would definitely consider visiting the ridge anywhere from like early September, like through September, October. Um, and like, it's open every day. So I think from nine to four or in like weather depending. Um, but also there's this really cool opportunity, but it's not currently open because of COVID. But I think for like a donation of like $5 or something, like you can get a tour of the owl banding. So like you can like go there at night and like you can release some really cute little sawit owls and also like donate to a really great cause too. Cool. And I'm guessing the good way to get connected with that is either through you or um, through their website to find out more information about how to connect with Hawkridge. Yeah, I would visit their website. And also, I think Margie's in here in this yep. talk too. And so, yeah, you could also just message Margie over here too. Cool. Um, I'm trying to think, I feel like there's one other thing I wanted to share. And then I was like, oh, I want to go check that out. Oh, I was just going to make a note um, that I believe that the actual road right up to the viewing platform is now closed for the season. If I'm incorrect, Margie or someone else can, but I believe I saw that the other day. And so, in order to get into Hawks Ridge now, sometimes you can drive right up to kind of that viewing area, but there's a parking lot that the gates close, which is kind of nice actually, because you can have a nice walk up the hill either on the Seven Bridges Road side or by Amity Creek um, area or on the other side close to St. Scholastica. There's a couple different ways to get into that space. So definitely a cool resource to check out. Mm -hmm. um, well, thanks, Claire. And if you have anything else to share, Claire, I'll give it to you one last time here. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for having me and thanks for listening to my bird spiel. Um, it was a fun internship. And if any of you guys want to do an internship, like totally go for it. I highly recommend it. Cool. Thanks, Claire. I will um, kind of wrap things up here. I was actually going to share my screen. I realized I don't have it up yet. But as I shared at the end or at the beginning of the presentation, um, this internship was supported by the Margaret A. Cargill philanthropies, which is investing in St. Scholastica um, students and faculty and supporting um, sustainability, including sustainability internships. So this was a paid internship um, that Claire was able to participate in. If you're interested in pursuing um, one for the summer or the fall, uh, feel free that we have a small number of them available. And you can reach out to myself or Carrie Taylor Kemp, who also asked the question today is in our career services area. We'd love to get more students connected with Hawk Ridge or other organizations. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, look forward to connecting with you in the future and good luck as the last few weeks of the semester wrap up.